Okay, this is uh, number nine from section uh, 5.1. Put this up here, 5.1. <clears throat> okay, now, um, we basically, this is our the left side of our identity, we, identity and our right side. Now, there's a couple ways to approach this. Now, what I've been doing right now is I've been emphasizing the fact that the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals one. So we could work on the right side, and we could put the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x. We could substitute, and it would be easy to make the right side look like the left side. But the way we actually do is we use this, the, this Pythagorean uh, identity. We use it so much that we can actually, if we subtract it, um, the sine squared from both sides, we can actually write this like this. I'll do it in a different color. If I subtract one, if I subtract the sine squared from both sides, I can I can write this as the cosine squared of x equals what? Well, we got the one on the right, and if I subtract the sine squared minus the sine squared. Now we use this so often that these are just almost equivalent. So we know that the cosine equals 1 minus the sine squared because they add up to be 1. Since the sine squared plus the cosine squared add up to be 1, then we can say the cosine squared equals 1 minus the sine squared. I think that makes sense. You just you look at this and you subtract sine squared from both sides, and you've got that. And in the same manner, the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x equals 1 also implies, what do you think the sine squared of x would equal? Well, it just equals 1 minus the other one. So it's 1 minus the cosine squared of x. So these are so easy. I mean, jot these down and add these to your identities if you want. But these are these are so so basic that uh, because of that simple to subtract, to subtract this from both sides, so 1 minus this, 1 minus this equals that, or 1 minus this equals that. Okay? And then these, these we can use these equivalently. So when I see something like this, rather than putting uh, sine squared plus cosine squared in here, what I would do is I would just substitute one of these. And since I really want to get this to, in the terms of the sine squared, and what they're doing here is actually a, a something we're going to be doing later. It's a kind of a two-angle formula, so that's that's why I, I'm letting you know that this is a better way to do it. It saves a little bit more space. Then what I can do is I want to get this all in terms of the sine. See, this is just sine. This is cosine and sine. So instead of writing the cosine, what would I write? Well, the cosine squared. So I can rewrite this now. Let me rewrite this down here again. Cosine squared of x minus the sine squared of x. And we want to show that that equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And this is actually a, a double angle formula we're going to be talking about later. So it's kind of an important application. Then, uh, since I want to get just sine squared, what I do is I've got to write this in terms of the sine squared. So the cosine squared, all right, is equal to 1 minus the sine squared. So I'll write this as 1 minus the sine squared of x, okay? And that's this. So this is a little faster way to do it rather than using the 1, the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals 1. It's just it's just one extra step. that That's used so often we just do it on our head, okay? So, so think about that. Make sure that makes sense. And these are very important kind of little corollaries off of these uh, identities. So kind of jot those down. And, and so we, can use, we want to be able to use these just as easily as we use those. Okay? So the cosine squared equals 1 minus the sine squared. And then I got minus the sine squared of x. And then that's all set because I got two of those. If I want, I can put them like that, 1 minus 2 sine squared of x, and I've got one of these, and then minus something, and minus something is minus 2 times the something, so minus 2 sine squared of x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So that's definitely proved there. You could have said there even. Okay? So try to keep that in mind. That's that's something we use a lot, so, so I want you to have that at your fingertips. Okay? Let's take a look at number 11. And 11 is the uh, cosecant of theta. 
So they're going to the theta, same idea. Theta minus the sine of theta. And they want to show that that's equal to um, cotangent cosine of theta. Cotangent cosine of theta. Okay, so this is what we've got. I think that's all right. Let's just look a little room here. Have to add some paper down here. Okay, so again, we talked about this in class. I've got two terms here, one term here. So if I want to get the left to look like the right, and I might kind of work both. You can work both sides and get them both to be sine and cosine. That'll work also. Uh, what I'll try to do is get one. I want one term, so I'll just try to make this one fraction. So first of all, I'm going to write these in a fractional form. So the cosecant is the same thing as what? The cosecant is 1 over the sine minus the sine of theta. Okay. Now remember, this is a difference and this is a product, so we'll try to get one, uh, one term here. So we'll try to get one fraction. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom here. So this is uh, 1 over the sine of theta minus the sine of theta. And I need a theta, sine of theta in the bottom, so I'll multiply the top and the bottom by the sine of theta. Okay. So we'll go down, down here. And we're going to see something pretty interesting in just a moment. And probably can use what we just talked about, I think. It looks like we're going to be able to use that right now. Okay, so if I put these over a common denominator, this is number 11 again, then I'm going to have 1 minus the sine, and this is the sine squared of theta, right? All over the sine of theta. Okay. And we said, what was 1 minus, what was the uh, 1 minus the sine theta? Because we've got two terms here. Remember, 1 minus the sine theta, that was sine squared of theta. Remember what I, I gave you up here to remember? That's the same thing as the cosine squared of theta. All right? So just remember from the last, I think, number 9, we talked about this. Okay? 1 minus the sine squared of theta equals the cosine squared of theta. That comes from our Pythagorean identity. So, yeah, like I say, you have to know those pretty good because we do use them a lot. And you can see right now how we're using it. Okay. Sorry about that. So, we have the cosine squared of theta, and that's going to be all over the sine of theta. Now, I forgot what I was... I was Setting these, I'm trying to get these equal to the cotangent of theta times the cosine of theta. All right? Okay. So still not there. But I can break this up and say the cosine squared is the same thing as the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta. And that's all over the sine of theta times 1, isn't it? Is that all right? I'll take a look at this think about it. It makes sense. Remember, we use our Pythagorean identity to show that this is the same thing as the cosine squared. But the cosine squared is the cosine times the cosine because, see, I'm trying to get a cotangent. I know the cotangent is the cosine over the sine. So I'll break this up, and it looks like I'm almost done there. So this is, looks like, if I break this up, this is going to be... times the cosine of theta, and there you go. That's it, because that's the cotangent, and that's the cosine. So i got to Matt, check that off here. So we've got it now, because that's the cotangent, and that's the cosine. Okay? So that's number 11. Okay? 
So again, we use that identity in number nine, so I hope that you remember that now, so that'll save you some, some time.